1945. Canada votes for Mackenzie King's Liberals. The government returns to power for its third consecutive majority government. An unprecedented triumph. Every province returns Liberals to the new parliament. John Bracken's newly named Progressive Conservatives saw heavy gains in Ontario. Elsewhere, they were not so successful. They captured 67 seats. King's Liberals won 127. The Cooperative Commonwealth Federation Party, known as the CCF, with M.J. Coldwell at the helm, were left disappointed. The party was expected to win more seats. They sent only 29 members to Parliament. Social reform was a key issue in the 1945 federal election. The Liberals promised jobs, land and business support to returning veterans, public spending on housing, family allowances, loans to farmers, and tax reductions. Unity, security, freedom. Vote for a new social order, read their campaign slogans. They stressed that steps had already been taken to see that every Canadian after the war shall have a wide open chance to make a real success of his life. Mackenzie King regarded himself as Canada's leading social reformer. The progressive conservative leader John Bracken told voters, King gives you a good dose of socialism and then pays a backdoor call on capitalism. The progressive conservatives stood square for private enterprise and individual freedom. They were against socialism and state control of enterprise, Bracken said. The CCF proposed to socialize banks, big corporations and processing plants. They told voters that these businesses are being operated to the detriment of Canadian people. They said that Canada should go forward to a new life and not back to the old evils. In September 1943, a Gallup poll showed the CCF with a one-point lead over both the Liberals and the Conservatives. A year later, the CCF won the provincial election in Saskatchewan. They became the first socialist government in North America. During the months leading up to the 1945 election, the CCF became the target of anti-socialist campaigns. A concerted propaganda drive was mounted. It warned that the CCF would exterminate democratic government by violence. Coldwell said that his party was the victim of a flood of vicious propaganda led by big corporate and financial interests from Toronto. He found it grave and disturbing. The anti-CCF campaign worked. The party was expected to win 70 to 100 seats. They hoped to win enough seats to form a minority government. They only won 29. Not a single CCF candidate was elected in Ontario. May 1945. Victory in Europe. Germany has surrendered unconditionally. Fighting continued against the Japanese. John Bracken's progressive conservatives focused on the conscription issue. Mackenzie King had delayed implementing conscription as long as possible. Conscription if necessary, but not necessarily conscription, he said. In 1944, 16,000 conscripts were set overseas. The progressive conservatives said conscription should have been instituted earlier in the war. Bracken accused King of the greatest betrayal ever perpetrated. He called King cowardly and disgraceful for his conduct throughout the Second World War. One reporter of the day wrote about the fierce onslaughts made towards the King government by its opposition. In speech after speech, Bracken spoke of the government's cowardly manpower policy. It was hard-edged and unrelenting, wrote one contemporary historian. It failed. The war in Europe was over, and to many, the war in the Pacific was largely in the hands of the Americans. Canadians' main concern was with post-war social issues. Mackenzie King had predicted this. Months before the election, he told his caucus that the campaign would be fought on the peace issues and the social issues, not the conscription issue. 
the Liberal Party had accurately judged what most Canadians wanted, a brighter future. The Progressive Conservatives built their campaign around the personality of their leader, John Bracken. Their advertisements read, John Bracken, the man. John Bracken, the worker. John Bracken, the farmer. It was meant to appeal to every kind of voter. Mackenzie King told one newspaper that the Tories had sold John Bracken as if he were a new breakfast food or a new brand of soap. Election night. In Quebec, 53 of the 65 ridings went to King, a reflection that the Quebec people believed that King had done all he could to maintain his promise on conscription. Only two Conservatives were elected in that province. In Ontario, it was a different situation. The Conservatives captured 48 of the 82 seats. With their overwhelming success in Ontario, Bracken and his party thought they had a chance to win enough seats to form a minority government. As the results from the West trickled in, their hopes were dashed. Only five Conservatives were elected in three prairie provinces. Mackenzie King had predicted his party would win 130 seats. They won 127 seats. He had his majority, but it was a narrow one. He lost his own seat in Prince Albert. It was largely due to the soldiers' vote. They voted against him. The election of 1945 was a turning point in Canada's political history. Canadians had survived the depression of the 30s. They had endured six years of war. They now demanded a better, brighter world. The Liberals promised a new social order. One contemporary historian wrote, It was the beginning of social welfare politics that would set the framework for the governing of Canada for the rest of the century.